Thank you for joining me on Instagram and thank you for joining me on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook groups. Like I'm, I'm in a few places. Why? Because the Marky Lemon said I go live on Facebook every Friday, but I go live on Instagram every Friday. So grab your new real estate agent journal. If you're like Carrie, you know, I don't need it, but I think you need it. You can also get the socially savvy agent and that would be appropriate for today. That would be appropriate for today because we are going to talk about making social media work for you or in some, you know, or how to make social media work for you. I got my notes and some of you should just see like, this is serious. It's easily a blog post. Like, like this is a whole course, a whole, an, an entire, an entire course for those of you on Facebook or YouTube or wherever you're watching. So again, for those of you, wherever you are, Take a second and let me know where are you chiming in from? Where are you chiming in from? D, I need a DM so you could tell me what I said I was going to create a video on. Because I was like, oh, what did D say? So, yeah. Um, so I think you I think you need I think you need everything in your life. I mean, like this is this is good because I actually give you what you need to go live on social media or to create a reel. So so you need that. But if you if you have the new real estate agent journal we are you know how to make social media work for you and, and i use my book for real because you can see the coffee spills we are um going to be uh mm, 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 mm. we could be around page 60 there is no inbox in real estate we could be on page four which timely education you need to always be learning or number five you're running a business take it seriously Take the notes wherever you think it makes sense for you. So again, you do not have to be a new real estate agent to invest. You could give it to a friend. Yeah, there you go. So again, let me know where are you watching from, what city, what state, and then take a second, click that little arrow, share, share, share. Let's invite a few friends. Let's see if I can blow up a few people's DMs. You know, maybe I can get the 31 year old to join me, right? Oh, I gotta move this coffee. I got two cups. You know, I'm always double fisted. Some of you might be like this in the evenings. So, can you tell me where I got this mug? Well, who made this mug? Who made this mug? Who made this mug? Right, me and my my fun mugs. So here we go. <clears throat> and I got my notes. I got my notes. I got my notes. All right, so. Thank you again for joining me. I am Carrie Little, your host of Coffee with Carrie, typically every Friday at 9 a.m., typically every Friday at 9 a.m. Central Time. And um, today I want to talk to you about how to make social media work for you. It, it's time. It, we're, we're at that point. A lot of people DM me. A lot of people, I get a lot of questions. Some of you, and I can just give a shout out to all of the agents that are doing this extremely well, right? You got Sheena Baker. You got... Um, I list luxury, Keisha. You've got some people that don't have a huge following, like Naja Morris, like Naja, I think that's her last name. I hope, please forgive me. Like Naja, even though she might not have a huge following, her stuff is on point. Like sometimes we think we need to be the hero. You got the Kiana, right? We all, Listen, we all want that videographer following us. And the videographer could be as simple as your husband, because there are days, there are days when you need someone, right? Amina, you just, you, you got everything made for you. Although when it's our family, I get it. They don't help us like everyone else should help us. All right. So here we go. Making social media work for you. Hopefully I can read what I wrote. Cause you know, I took my glasses off, you know, I took my glasses off. So, so if you could tell me where I got that mug from, you know, you, tell me where, who, who made that mug, who made that mug. All right. So we've all heard the story. Here we go. Rome wasn't built in a day, you know, or a watched pot never boils. Have you ever stand? Yeah, have you ever stood in front of a boiling pot of water and you're like, oh, I need these sweet potatoes done or I just want the tea done or you just you're trying to make tea and you're like, it's not happening fast enough. It's because we want things to happen quickly. So this is also true in social media. It's also true in social media. However, no matter where you are in the in the social media sandbox, you can generate new leads. There is also truth in your network determines your net worth. Let me say that again for the people in the back. 
or the people in the nosebleed seats or the people that aren't focused because you're driving. Do not look at me if you're driving. There is something to be said about your network determines your net worth. And I had a great conversation with an attorney yesterday. So if you're my friend watching today, um, the next generation agent under the age of 23, we want to do this. We are trying to figure out how to make this work for us. Now, when I started in real estate, I was like 29 and, and I looked young. Now, whether you think I look young or not, I, you know, when you look young, it's harder. When you don't have confidence, it's harder. I was even talking to someone about how they went to dinner, took out a few agents and one agent never said a word under the age of 23. Sometimes it has to do with who you are and are you having the conversations? And, you know, let me, let me make sure I turn this on to airplane mode. Only because you know, it's going to happen. Somebody's going to, somebody's going to call me. All right. So, so if you want to build a successful lead generation funnel on social media, if you do, you have to talk to the consumer the way they want to hear. And I've got a formula for all of you at the end. I've got this, this stuff really does work. It, I mean, it works, but you know, did you see my reel? It's called work. It's called work. So you need to talk to the consumer the way, the way they want to hear you. What does the consumer want to hear from you? Remember, I'm a Gen Xer. I will be 51 April 8th. Everyone, shout out to Carrie and, and Mina because I have a twin on April 8th. I'll be 51. So I know that my network is watching. They're watching, but they're not commenting until we get in person. Like they're like, hey, Carrie, you and Mark are funny, but they don't comment on social media. So I know that people are watching. So you need to talk to the consumer the way they want to be talked to. All right, so ask yourself these questions because I got a lot. Are you posting on social media? Are you? Or are you just here for the fun of it? Are you here because we made you? Tell me, are you posting on social media? Are you getting the engagement you ex expect, right? And are you generating leads? Is your, um, are you, are you following up, right? Are you generating leads? Do people ask you questions, comment, click, or click your call to actions, or do they end up in your DM? So you need to ask yourself these questions. You really do. Yeah, I'll be 51 first, but that's just because I'm, um, I'm East. So I'm going to repeat these questions again. I need you to, I need you to answer these questions. Seriously. I do. Nobody wants to see that. What does the consumer want to hear from you? What does the consumer want to hear from you? Or what does your network want to hear from you? If you are, and I, well, I'm not even going to get to go there yet. Cause I got this written down. Are you consistent with posting on social media? Are you? Number three, are you getting the engagement you, you expected? Are you? Are you getting the engagement you expected, right? Let's see. I want to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm over here. Uh, hey, we got Country Club Hills in the house. You like my little studio? So then um, do people ask you questions, comment, or click your calls to actions? Or better yet, are they in your DM? Are they in your DM? Because all of you are in my DM. Like, I don't think you guys think I work. And then don't get mad at me if I don't respond right away. Don't get mad. My hair's real big. Okay. So it's time to have the conversation around social media. So let's do this. I'll, I'll share my tips and strategies from other agents too, because I, there is no perfect scenario, although I'm going to give you one. I've been playing in this sandbox for how long? Does anyone know how long I've been playing in the social media sandbox? Can anyone tell me? Anyone? Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. YouTube, how long have I been playing in the game, right? There was something called Ning, N-I-N-G, Proviso East. We all had one because we wanted to collaborate collaborate with our friends. Anyone MySpace? Where are my MySpacers? I still have the login, right? 10 years, 10 years, let's see it. So someone do the math, 2008, 2007, I've been playing in the social media sandbox. And I remember when the 20-year-old at the Baird & Warner office in Wheaton said, Carrie, you need Facebook. I'm like, no. Nope, not happening. I don't need it. She was like, yes, you need it. And she said, you can post your listings. I was like, okay, I need it. So I've been playing on, on Facebook since they opened it up to the old folks, to the old folks. Yeah, and I still have access to my, my space. Some of you are like, Ooh, some of you need to go look and probably shut that down because you did some stuff you shouldn't have done. All right, so here we go. So... I've got plenty of ways to help, and I'm going to give you tips on how to make social media work for you. 
So let's start here. Number one, write fast. Number one, or come back and watch the replay or listen to the podcast. Number one, there is no perfect social media. There, there's no perfect. There's no perfect. Now, when you go find people that have 200,000 followers, they've been doing this a long time with intention. They have. Or maybe they just got online with a swimsuit. I'm not recommending it, not recommending it. Although I really think that me swimming on TikTok got me to almost 10,000 followers in like a month. Again, not recommending it. Social media, um, <clears throat> media works when you work. It works when you work. If you don't have any followers, then lead generation will be different for you. Seriously, if you, how many of you liked high school? Me. How many of you like college? Kind of. Like I like people. I will wear you out in person. You know, I, some of you heard the story at the South Suburban Network. My husband will grab me because I talk too much. Right? Are you coming in here? Well, no, don't, 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 don't bring all that behind me. They put that back where you found it. Listen, yeah, don't, don't, don't. Yeah, so he, he thinks I talk too much. I don't think I go, I talk too much. Um, so I know people that have social media because we need it to be found on, we need to be found on social media. So we know we need it, right? Um, and their network is huge. So remember earlier I said your network determines your net worth. So if you hated high school, you didn't have friends, if you were the mean kid, the mean girl, you're going to work a whole lot harder. And if you can't control your mouth, like you're going to work harder than most of us. Right. So you can have, by the way, 100 connections and still generate leads. You can. Number two, we can't just post to post. I'm, I'm keeping it real. We can't just post to post. However, if you are posting just to post, you are doing better than don't the, the, than those that don't post. You are. If you are posting just to post, you you you've probably beaten the rest of us that are waiting to get ready to get ready. So at least you're there. Now, um, the next goal is to create a plan with intention. So let let me let me give you an example of posting just to post. How many of you have a car? How many of you have a car? But you have a car, and if someone walked up to your car, you'd be embarrassed because it's just dirty, disgusting. Let's just go with nasty. It's nasty because you eat in your car, and you're like, it's just gross. And you're a realtor or an entrepreneur or somebody of importance. If you're think of it like this is for real. If you are posting on social media just to post, think of it like your car. It's a hot mess. It's a hot mess. Syria is a hot, hot, hot mess. And let me just own it. I lived in my car. I, I did. Like, my office would always looked better than my car. And then I got Mark. Mark, you can't eat in the car. If I spill in the car, I better go clean it. I mean, it, it has to be quick. The car can't smell. None of that. Some of you can get a meal out of the back seat, a chicken nugget and some french fries. And there's probably a juice box container under the bottom. Keep your car clean. Oh, and I should just digress. That's a great way to go see how someone lives if they're going to be your tenant. Just walk them to their car. Okay, so I think you get it. I think you get it. Just, just some of you, you're doing the most. Like, it's okay to do the most and to be extra, but if you're going to do the most and be extra, make sure you probably already have a following. So some of you need to clean up your social media. Um, yeah. Yeah. So number three, what does your audience want from you? What does your audience want from you? Yeah, some, yeah, Raven, I'm going to go ahead and get this car washed <laughs> membership. Just tell them Carrie sent you. Tell them Carrie sent you. you. Just go ahead and get, right. I drive through the car wash so often because of that membership to the point where the guy's like, hi, Carrie, what did Mark buy today? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Just, yeah, right. So what does your audience want to hear from you? Some of you, I'm just going to come back to that, but let me say it like this so you can remember. Some of you are so caught up in wanting to be like everybody else that you're not you. You're not you. So you have to be you. So what does your audience want from you? Are people motivated by what they see, hear, and can do? Are they? Right? Some of you, let me... This is not going to be luxury at the where you guys think, but do, do you take every, all your photos with your purse? It is cute, though, isn't it? Isn't it cute? Do you guys all take photos with your purse? You're going to get robbed, right? 
This is low end luxury. I struggle writing a $2,000 check. I do. I can't even lie. Listen, some of you just need to go back to the 90s with the rest of us because that duffel, I'm going to bring that duffel out next week. That duffel from the 90s, coach was it, right? We were coaching it up. All right. But some of you, yeah. What do people want to hear from you? You think you need to go out, buy a new car. Some of you think you need to buy a Bentley. Some of you think you need to fake it to make it and do videos with cars. I'm just saying, I'm not saying don't do it. But then when you show up in the Fiat and you just took videos in the Bentley because you're trying to appear like luxury. Now, it doesn't mean you can't go rent luxury cars. And, and if I was going to do it, this is here would be my strategy. And I'll get back to my list. Right. Lord, talk about it if I see another person a picture. Right. Anyway, I think you're going to get robbed. But so, and I just lost my, oh, this is what I would do if I was wanted to talk about luxury cars. I would, oh, I should I should have brought my, my, my vision board over. If I wanted a certain car or if I wanted to, and I was, and let's just say I, I didn't have a whole, like, I just know it's not something that I should invest in because the cost of fixing a Bentley and a Rolls Royce and a Porsche even is high like a bentley bumper is probably three grand the windshield's three grand and you're like i'm out i'm out right back in the day dooney i might have one somewhere in a bin so anyway i would go and i would you know i talk about my vision board and maybe i talk about you know my journey and what i'm doing the plan to get what i want while giving to the community right like i might do something like that but just to make it look like you're successful i got lots of questions so what does your audience want to hear from you? Who are your fans? My fans are watching, but not always engaging. I told you that people want to talk to me, but they will wait until they show up in person. Told you that they'll text. Um, so text me, email, try to call or send me a private message, but they might not comment on the feed. And I know this. Yeah, fake it to your confident. I don't know, because then when you don't have it, you're going to be upset. Sometimes you just need to go through the journey. So, yep, Mark is working on a new deal. So here's the truth is I, you know, I'm like, Mark, you don't post enough. People don't know what you're doing. He's like, Carrie, I don't care. I don't care. Like he doesn't care. So he just finished the Addison flip. He's got another one he's working on. Um, just wrote the contract. He just closed the deal. And I'm like, you don't post and I can't do all of this for you. But people, but here's what I've learned is that some people are, um, I'm just going to post just that over on Facebook. Sorry. So um, people are sometimes motivated by what they see. So here's what I know, because I've gone on three listing appointments, four, and you some you know I don't want to do this, but I had to go back to work because my agents are going back to real work. So I'm like, I'm here I come. Two buyers. I'm not doing the work. Mark's going to go do it. I go can get the deal. Right? And yes, I deal with the people that tell me, Carrie, you didn't follow up fast enough or Carrie, you know, someone's asked telling me they're going to do the commission shorter. I'm like, OK, OK, fine. I don't have the bandwidth. So I need Mark to post because people will call. This is what happens when I post about investment properties. People will send me a DM to unload a property. They just do. They really do. And and it works. So you just really need like one every quarter, maybe one a year. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to post that on Instagram today for Mark. And I'm sure in my spare time, if I could interview Mark, if I could interview Mark on investment properties, um, yeah, I could sell out a class on investing. Um, yeah, we all watch what others do, but Mark could really, really seriously care less. He could care less. So number five, I need you to get over yourself and do video. It, get over it. Get over it. If you're like, Carrie, I don't look great. Pull the spanks on. They're, they got guys, Spanx. They got, they just, you should see me sometimes. I'm like, ooh, that reel looks bad. And I can see my tummy sitting over the jeans. So I just put text down there. <laughs> like, get over yourself. People want to hear from you. And we need the video. And if you don't have the video, if you're in the agent journey, I did a whole class on creating video reels without you ever being in the video. And then someone was like, oh, the voiceovers. I was like, yep, we could do, there's so much you can do with video. So get over yourself. There is really something, though, about clean video, because if you watch Kiana, um, Makita's videos have been really great recently. Some people have really figured out the background with the green screen. And if you have an iPhone or a droid phone, here's a tip. You might want to record the video if you're doing a reel first and then uploading it unless you want a filter, because I have on a filter. You can, I look real over here, 
I look young over here. Um, so yeah, get over yourself. <clears throat> and you really don't need all that extra stuff. So, some of you need, come in, lean in, lean in, lean, lean in, lean in. Some of you need to hear me when I say, when you do a video, you're doing the most. You got emojis up here. You've got text down here. You got 20 different colors. Your company brand colors are, are blue and white and you got red and you got orange and you got purple and you got green and you got all this stuff going on. What are we doing? Like, it's, stop trying to do the most and I bet you get more engagement when the video is just simple. Keep it simple, right? Keep it simple. What's the word? Keep it simple something. Um, okay, so then let's see. Uh, oh, and then, right, I, I, I said it, but I didn't say it. Trust me, really don't make it out or weird. It, ask your friends. And here's how you need to ask your friends. What do you think about my video? And they're going to be like, it's great. And then you're going to say, would you do it? And they're going to say, it's great for you because they don't want to tell you it's jacked up. They don't want, listen, Sheena told me one day and you've heard the story. She was like, here, you need Spanx on. I'm like, I do. She was like, yep. I was like, get my coat, get my coat, get my coat. I'd rather have a friend tell me how I look then to not tell me some of you come on some of you need to know some of you need to know all right so ask your friends what they think if they tell you fix it i won't tell you unless you ask but don't ask me if you don't want the truth if i make a mistake and someone tells me trust me i fix it or i take it down if someone tells me so some of you ask and then don't be offended just say thank you all right this is what we're doing number six you need to be human so you still need to be human in your videos. You don't, in some of you, you're, you need to relax a little bit, shake it out. Like Nicey, the photographer, she's like, Carrie, shake it out. You're, you're stiff, shake it out and do the video. There was a lady that I just saw on TikTok. It was funny. I can't, she was just talking about how you can learn something from a crackhead. Some of you are like, oh yeah, share that. It was hysterical, but she was telling a story. She was like, this happened and this happened. And she was just, she was all into it. Think of it when I say be human, how do you talk to someone at breakfast? How do you talk to someone when you're, you know, when you meet with your old school friends? How do you talk to someone that you know? Do you really talk like this? Hi, I am Carrie Little with Caremark Realty Group, and I want to give you three steps to home ownership or the fastest way to buy a house with little to no money down. Do you really sound like that? Because if you think you don't, then you need to just cut it out. I know code switch, get over it. Just be yourself. So you need to be be human. We cannot be um, perfect all day long. We can't. We can't be perfect all day long. Number seven, stop it. If you keep trying to keep up, you won't work. You won't work. So some of you, when I say stop it, some of you need to turn the phone over and stop doing this on Instagram. Although there's that's a good way to find some great reels that you want to do. But some of you need to set a timer on the stove. And, or a timer on your phone because you're doing this all day and you're like, here, let's, let's just make it real, right? You're like, oh, oh, man. And then your phone tells you you've been on your phone for, you know, screen time for like 20 hours and you did no work. Stop telling me you can't do one reel a day, but you're on reels all day. Stop telling me you can't do one TikTok, to, TikTok a day, but you're on TikTok all day. You are helping everyone else grow, but you're not growing. I know some of y'all, some of you are like, yeah, Carrie, just get out of my business. So you have to work this business, post on social media, use direct mail, capture emails, text messages, and emails. Your money is in your database. Remember when Instagram went down and Facebook and all this stuff? When it went down, you had no database. You couldn't email anybody. You were like, oh my gosh, I'm you. Some of you were like, you were like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? So yeah. So you need your money's in your database and then you can sell, sell your database. So seriously, for real, if not, if you're not really building this and creating inbound marketing, you're doing old school cold calling. Now, why did I go comment on this guy's post about cold calling? Because it became a debate. I was like, I'm done. I'm just going to end this. You can still do business with cold calling. But if you're going to do cold calling, my idea is if you don't answer the phone, it'll be, hey, this is Carrie with Caremark Realty Group. I'm the designated managing broker. And I see your home is no longer being actively marketed. When you decide to interview new agents, we have 30 agents ready um, to, to service your needs. So feel free to call me, text me, or email me. And I'm also on Instagram at Caremark Realty. Like you, if you're going to cold call, you need another hook. You need another hook. That's my 
strong opinion on inbound marketing. Number eight, real estate is not a sales business. It's a relationship business. So social media might not be working for you because you're using it. You're like DMing people and you're like people come into my DM, Carrie, can you be my mentor? Let me tell you, this is what really happens. No, I'm not mad at you, but I'm like, who are you? Have you ever commented? Like, I know who Cayenne is. I know who Sylvia is. I know who Harriet is. I think I know who Harriet is. Like, I don't know who your educated realtors are because it doesn't say your real name, but I might know who you are. So if you end up in my DM, now I'll eventually answer you. I might even give you my blog post on uh, mentor versus a uh, coach. That might happen. But um, so just know here, let's see. I'm not going there. So, um, so just know if now I lost my train of thought because I was looking at uh, Facebook. You have to build relationships. You really, really, really have to build relationships. Um, so, and you must continue to build these relationships all day long. All right. So here we go. Get your pens ready. I'm going to feed you with a fire hose. So, how do you make social media work for you? Here we go. And I already gave you eight. We had a eight step plan, a conversation. You like my shirt? Shout out to all things real estate, right? Go feel free. I don't, I don't get a commission, but go, go buy something on all things real estate today and then DM them and say, Carrie sent me. So how do you make social media work for you? Are we ready? Right. Let me see. Uh, I, I got to go read what uh, Ebony said. Or you may have somebody just harass you until they say, let me see what the peach, what this peach wants. There is something to that DM. If you're consistent, if you show up, eventually, eventually you get help. Because someone asked me about a property that wasn't conform, that was li listed one way, but it didn't conform, and the city didn't, you know, said it couldn't be so many units because it was this many units. And if you send me a message on Snapchat, it's a guarantee I'm responding because half of y'all ain't on there. Okay, so how do you make social media work for you? All right, here we go. Where's everybody today? Is it warm outside? Number one, know your audience. What do they want from you? So if you are the next generation, so I'm going to, I'm using one example. So you need to know where you fall. Are you the silent generation, the baby boomer, the Gen Xers, the I generation or the next group coming up? Who are you? Um, if you are the next generation, all y'all want wealth. We're going to be rich overnight and wealth building is it. It, it is it. Why you, how to build wealth by your first house. I, I promise you, if I say that, I'm going to have an audience. I promise you I could sell out of an event and I don't know what I'm doing. So that, yeah, the millennial, the I, yeah, the, oh, I forgot the millennial, the millennial, then the I generation. So the, but the I generation is all about wealth building. Listen, and please don't, don't, don't come through the phone. Don't come through Facebook or LinkedIn, but we got some kids and we've got those, you know, those, them kids, those kids, like, it's different. Like they will walk out of a job in a hot second because they want to be rich overnight. I did too. But listen, I worked at Sears. I worked at Nordstrom. Um, I needed a paycheck. So listen, if if I could, if I didn't have any money right now and Amazon is offering a bonus to start, I'm show me. I'm there. What? You mean I can work three days out of the week, 12 hours a day? What? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Let's do this. I'm watching the replay of church on YouTube and I get Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday off. Right. What are we doing? Okay. So you have to know your audience. So that next generation is all about building wealth. So we got to figure out, so you could easily, let me, let me give you some tips. If I'm that next generation or any generation, and I talk about building wealth and I have a video on how to, how to build wealth with your first home. Number two, how to get your friends to build wealth with you, right? Create an LLC. You know, everybody puts money in. You buy one property. One of, one of you moves in. You start making money. You go buy another property, three unit. The other person moves in. You buy another, like there's six of you. But you need, you, you got to meet and everybody has to put in the work. Everybody's got to put in the work. So whoever's got the good credit buys first. How to, and, and we were, and I was talking to an attorney about this. Some people don't understand, you know, credit. And it's sometimes it has to do with how we grew up. Some people don't realize that you do need to pay your bills on time on purpose and your bills need to be down to under 20% of 
the amount you can use. So if you have a ten thousand, let me go. If you have a thousand dollar credit card, that means what? You cannot spend more than two hundred dollars, or you need to make sure it's always paid down to the two hundred dollars. Like you can have classes, but well, huge. How to get your first Louis Vuitton buying real estate. And then when I have that class, I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you at the end, don't buy the Louis Vuitton, go buy another house. But I promise you, you will show up if I tell you how to get your first Louis Vuitton. I just think people are motivated by what they see. How to get your first $100 coach purse. Uh, okay. So number two, document your real estate journey document your real estate journey on social media. And so if you're like, first of all, anybody in the room, don't you don't have to raise your hand for real. Um, you could just give me the eyeballs. But how many of you don't own a property and you're a licensed real estate agent? Because I know, I know some folks are posting, talking about building wealth and they don't even own their own property. Some of you just need to go back to work for a year to buy a house because you have not figured out the real estate game. How can how can you educate someone if you've never gone through the process? Now, on the flip side, you've lived in a house all your life. Your parents lived in a house. You your parents invested, so you can you might be able to talk the talk. But if you can, if you have never gone through the process, please buy a house. Don't go buy a car if your car is raggedy and but clean. Keep it, keep it. If you're about to pay your car off and you get that car itch. Go to Amazon and buy that new car smell stuff and spray your car. Go wash it. Go clean it. Go get some cover, seat covers. Don't buy a car. Go buy a house. There was a lady that talked about, I don't, I, I'm sure I shared it in my stories. It might still be there for another hour or two. But if you, yeah, you go buy new construction, right, Patricia? Like if, if you, um, she talked about how she doesn't own a car and she talked about her journey to a, make a, being a millionaire. And she said, I still don't own a car. And she's like, she was looking at that G-Wagon. And then she was like, ooh, I could not stomach spending that $1,000 a month. My highest car payment was $225 a month. And we don't have a car payment. So I'm asking the question, do you own a house and you need to document your real estate journey on social media? And your real estate journey, people want to hear the stories. Did all of you watch Kiana and she taught she would be in her car? Now don't drive and do this. I'm just saying, because if you hit someone, your ENO doesn't kick in. Your, your car insurance might not even kick in, or it will, but it's going up. Like don't drive and talk about the journey. And don't go into someone else's property and videotape talking about I'm showing houses. That's not what I mean. Talk about the hard stuff. Talk about the fun stuff. You might even interview a client when they're done and talk about, was this easy? And they're like, nope. I didn't know I was going to have to write 10 letters on why I was late to the Madigan's credit card. That was a long time ago. But that's my true story. Like, I didn't know. You would think I would know because my mother said she didn't think she had to teach us how to pay bills because she always paid her bills on time. But I was like, I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. So there were things I had to do. So talk about your journey. And if you're not ready to talk about your journey, Break out your mobile device and videotape your journey and then post it after you're done. And then you can say, I just bought my first house. So over the next year, I'm going to show you what I went through and tell the truth. Like when you're sitting in front of the loan officer and the loan officer is like, Carrie, why were you late on this? Like, seriously, I see it. Yes, ma'am. I have stories of when we bought for days and with a VA loan, like, like tell your stories, like especially, I mean, and you're a veteran, like there's your niche. That's your audience. That's your number one. That's your audience. So document your journey. Buy a, here, if I'm a next generation, go buy that multi-unit with your friends and then, you know, tell us how you did it. Tell us that you had to stay out of Starbucks. Tell us that you had to stay out of TJ Maxx. Tell us that you had to sell your car to buy a house. Tell us that you had to get on the metro or the train. Tell us that you had to ride the bike on the prairie path to get to work. Tell us that you had to hitch a ride because you wanted a house and you were tired of living in the basement of your parents' house. They want you out anyway. Your parents should walk around the house naked. Oh, did I say that? To get you out. Did I say that? Did I say that? Okay, number three. Yeah, so number two, show that it can be done. Number three, share content for the consumer, not us. Let me, again, let me say this again. Share content for the consumer, not us. Share content for the consumer, not us. Not real toys. I saw a post recently where an agent said, all we do is showcase, you know, we're closing deals. We're cl I'm closing deals. We're doing the boomerang. If I see another boomerang, 
I'm going to, but it works. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing the boomerang. It's just not who I am. I'd rather, you know, interview a client and have them talk about the process, why they loved me and, and the, and the hiccups, everything cannot be perfect. However, remember you're posting for the consumer, not for us. So if that, that's your niche and your network is like, Ooh, Sheena closed another deal or, Ooh, Pamela closed another deal or, Ooh, Leslie, right? Leslie, Ooh, she closed another deal. Why isn't she helping me? People are motivated by what you're seeing. Seeing there are some people, y'all Atlanta folks, man, y'all got to show up the closing in stilettos because that's what people want to see. So number three, share content for the consumer, not us. We love the show. Look at me. I just sold another home. But how about an awesome testimony about home ownership? A great video of the client's experience. Because here's what's going to happen. Realtors are going to watch you. They might emulate what you do. Don't be offended. It's the best form of flattery. We all have a different network, but you must. You must post for the consumer. Right. Two bedroom apartment with your husband, two toddlers and an infant. Arr, we had to buy something. Oh, go talk about that. Go talk about, you know, um, I, you know, you know, I have a story. I went to a listing appointment and the tenant was in the property and I'm like, you know, I don't work for you. I work for the landlord. I know you're moving. And he was mad. He was mad because he had paid the, this homeowner had never moved in. They ended up moving to another part of Illinois, but they had already bought this new construction. They owned it for 30 years. And guess what that tenant did? Paid off their mortgage. He was mad. He was like, I should own this house. I was like, you probably should. Do you want me to help you buy something? Well, my credit's bad. Okay. So for 30 years, you didn't fix it. Right. Red bottoms with Tiffany blue boxes for our clients. Oh, but if you do do red bottoms and Tiffany boxes for your clients, you know, other people want that Tiffany box. They do. So this stuff works. I'm not saying don't do it. So. So, yeah. <clears throat> Number four, have a small group event with your clients and have them invite a potential client. How about that? And then, you know, go live, talk about what you're doing, talk about, you know, people are giving their experiences. They're talking about investing, like have a small event for just your clients. That means I got to clean up. My house is clean. I'm, you should see all the shoes upstairs. Maybe I'll go show you. I'm going through my shoes. I'm going through my shoes. So have a small event. Number five, pick one thing and own it. Pick one thing and own it. It doesn't mean you can't do two, three, or four, but what do you want to be known for? If you want to be known for luxury, it can be done. I'm going to say some hard things. If you want to be known for luxury, you're probably going to have to do with luxury people that own luxury do. So I'm going to say the hard things. I'm not saying it can't be done. But if you don't live in their neighborhoods, tell me why would I pick you? What, you don't you don't know what a tray ceiling is or I mean, you don't know, you know, what bamboo stair is. You do, you know, and if you don't know and you want to do luxury, if you want to own it, pick one thing first and build to it, like build to it. So if it's first time home buyers and then you're going to talk about wealth building with first time home buyers and then eventually you get that first time home buyer that buys a three unit, then a two unit, then a three unit. And every four years they move into the new unit. Eventually they're your luxury client. So work on it, build to it. So number five, pick one thing, then create content around it and continue to post about it. So, yeah. There you go. So pick that one thing pick that one thing. And so I don't know what you mean by not true. You can get a referral, but let me just tell you, you will be sniffed out, but I believe you could do whatever you believe you can do. I do believe it. Like I'm, if don't let me stop your growth. Don't let me stunt the growth. Don't, if you believe you can do luxury and you live in a, in a, in a one bedroom condo, go, I'm not telling you not to go for it. I'm saying some of us need to build to it because they're, yes, the referrals do work. Um, Number six, you are the brand. So showcase yourself in the process and don't forget you can't show other people's listings without permission. You need it in writing. You need it in writing. So go through the process. Show, show us, show us you're the brand goes back to a professional photo shoot. Although I think you can take great photos with your iPhone, your droid phone. You just need some good light. You should see how many lights I have on today. Although I look human over here and great over here. Yeah, so we need to build their trust first. Right, Yolanda? Tell them again. Teach that class. So you are the brand, so showcase yourself in the process and don't forget 
You cannot show someone else's listing while showing homes. Some of you do it and you are in violation. It's not my job. I just watch and I just wait for you to tell me, Carrie, yep, I got to find. Because that's the, the two biggest complaints are multiple offers and then the agent that complained realized that the listing agent was correct. Showing houses without permission. And the other one is social media. Social media will get us all into trouble. It really will. So, so you're the brand. Show us. Show us your family. Showcase your family. Please, please, please. Um, number seven, pick a day to create video and be consistent. It really, 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 really works. So what if, and I say this a lot, what if you were consistent with the same time every week? And it could be a reel the same time every week. So you know every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock you're going to post a reel. And all of a sudden people start to look for your tip of the week. So it's going to be your Wednesday tip of the week. And you're going to talk about investing. And you're going to give tips on investing. And then every quarter you're going to do a Zoom or an in-person event on investing. You become the person, the go-to person. You need to become the go-to person. So pick a day to create video. And I said earlier, get over yourself. Um, number eight, all direct mail should have your social media on it, all of it. So here we go. So I got stuff. So this is me. Remember, I'm a designated managing broker. I'm a broker owner. There's, I think, 31 or 32 of us now. And every, so I'm going to start mailing about my YouTube channel. But look, I've got my social media on the back. See that? So this is me. How do I, How many houses do I need to make to... How many houses do I need to sell to make $100,000? This is my YouTube channel. So I am at about 17 or 18 videos for 2022. You know, that's my goal. So what if I just kept doing this? My podcast now, it's been since the pandemic. I've been posting on my podcast every single week. I have a bigger following. I get hired from it. And I have been going live on Instagram every Friday. If I miss a Friday, I'm probably teaching a class. But I usually try to figure out how to make it up. Um, so show us your setups for today. Once you're done, I, this is what I'll do is I'll show you my setup. It's going to look crazy. I'll show you my setup, but it'll be in my story. So for those of you that are on Facebook, you need to come to Instagram, Carrie J O little Carrie, like the movie C A R R I E. So I'll show you my setup then. Cause I have like a few things going on. Uh, then, so when I say direct mail, cause you still need direct mail. Some of you don't think you do, but if you have, if you have figured out the game of TikTok and reels, don't use direct mail. But what if you did? You're going to reach the, the Gen Xers. You're going to reach the baby boomers and the silent generation because we need you to mail to us to be seen. We do. We do. So follow me on YouTube. Subscribe today. Subscribe today. I'm Carrie Jo Little everywhere. So you need to put your social media on everything. Number nine, focus on your clients, your network. Building a following, engaging with your network and asking for the business. So if you only have 100 followers, focus on your, your followers. If you know, let's say you, here, this is me. Let's say you work for TJ Maxx, Sears Roebuck and Company, McDonald's Corporation, NEC Technologies, Kassane Business Systems. I'm telling Nordstrom, because thank you for calling Nordstrom in Oak Brook, right? I didn't answer the phones, but I used to hear it. Thank you for calling Nordstrom in Oak Brook. Or it's custom jewelry let, let mina was better at it than me but let come see me i could put put together some some jewelry and i you come in there with a thousand dollars and you're like my wife needs something for christmas i'm like tell me about your wife i could you can do the same thing with real estate have a conversation so you need to focus on your clients your network if you don't have a network you need to get outside you need to walk your neighborhood go walk the dog often wear your i love real estate shirt right Go ride your bike. You know, I, you know, you, people need to know you're in the business of real estate. So some of you need some friends. And again, I just hate to tell you, if you hated high school, if you hated people, you need prayer. All right. So I'm going to go through the 10 and the nine again, and then, and then I'm going to give you the formula. So how do you make social media work for you? Number one, know your audience. What do they want? If you're that next generation, it's all about wealth building. Show me the money. I'm not saying you should show me the money, but you show the process. It's all about wealth building. Show me how to build wealth because I don't want to go to work for Amazon. Go work for Amazon. Go work for Amazon and build wealth. Number two, document your real estate journey on social media. Tell us, right? Some of you know. I'm looking at you. 
I'm looking at you. Like, tell us. People want to know. We want to know. We want to know what you're doing. <clears throat> so document your journey. If you, when you bought your first house, what it was like, what was it like? I should interview my sister because she was like, I didn't know I could buy. Like, what? Me too. Like, you should, I didn't know I could buy until they handed me the keys to new construction. I didn't know. I walked the dog with my merch from Tracy. So, right, Tracy Hicks. I love real estate. You got the dog. Right. I, you're not boring, Trina. Trina, you know you're not boring because you probably could. You, listen, I listen to you talk to your family. You are not boring. Um, so number two, document your real estate journey on social media. Share content from the consumer, not up for the consumer, not us. Show Share content to get the consumer to, to, to take action, not us. Now, I'm not saying that you won't get a DM from another agent because we want you to be our mentor or a coach. That's fine. But your job is to build your business. So get off of social media and stop. You can go watch what they do. But again, I said, if you're if you're doing this for 20 hours a week and you haven't posted, stop telling me you can't do a reel once a day. Unless you're that super producer and you just don't have time. But I think you have time because if you get up, get dressed, put on your makeup, just saying, you know who I'm talking to. Before you head out the door, get your ring light or ring lights and do a quick 60 second video. Even if you do the video and save it, you can post later. Number uh, four, have small group events with your clients and then ask them to invite a friend because you need some uh, clients uh, and you, you, you need them to help you with your business. Number five, pick one thing and own it. Pick one thing and own it. Pick one thing and own it. Number six, you are the brand. You are the brand. You're the brand. If you talk about wealth building and then you talk about how you take a vacation every quarter, Talk about it. Talk about how hard you work for those three months. Talk about talk about it. Tell us. Tell the consumer why you need to take a break because real estate is not. Hey, let's go show a house. Hey, you're under contract. Hey, we close. It, there's some. There's a whole lot that happens in the middle. And some of you know that some of you need to give your clients a bottle of vodka, a box of Kleenex, maybe some coffee, but some Pepto Bismol. Like it is not as easy as we make it look. It's not. It's not as easy as we make it look, although we want it to look easy. But then you all go out and get your real estate license. And now we're at, instead of, you know, under a million real estate agents, there's 1.6 million realtors. I digress. You should um, read The Road to Miracle Morning. Yep. Road to Re Miracle Morning for realtors. I also think you should read um, um, the book, uh, the your manual for life. There's some other things I think you need to read. The Manual for Life, if you really want to know what that is, send me a DM or ask me and I'll tell you. Um, number seven, pick a day to create video. Be consistent. Number eight, all direct mail should have your social media on it with a call to action. Right. You know it ain't easy. And number nine, focus on your clients, your network, building and engaging with your network and ask for the business. So here's the formula. Here is the formula. I like it. Kiss. Keep it simple. Stupid. I got to post that one over here. Yeah, I got to add that one to Facebook. Okay, so here's your formula. <clears throat> Niche plus consistency. And if you have questions, type them in the Q&A on Instagram. If you have questions on Facebook, I'll see it too. Just type it and it'll pop up and restream. So niche plus consistency plus video plus reels and or TikTok plus engagement, plus lead capture, plus ask for the business, plus follow-up, and I'm going to say it again, equals how to make, this will make social media work for you. Nothing happens overnight. It happens over time with a lot of hard work and consistency and asking for the business. So let me say it again. Niche, you need a niche. If you don't have one, figure it out. It's okay to do a few things, but eventually you'll figure out that you're only working with first-time home buyers. Own it. People that need credit repair, own it. It is what it is. Eventually, they'll buy a house. Eventually, they'll sell a house. So number one, niche. Number two, consistency. Number three, video, reels. You need reels, 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 reels. Number, um, number so I'm sorry, niche plus consistency plus video plus reels plus engagement plus lead capture plus ask for the business plus follow-up equals this will make social media work for you. Oh, I should have added, I'm sorry, niche plus your network because you need your network. My network won't work for you. 
if you guys are watching other real estate agents, you're like, oh my gosh, how do they do it? It's called hard work, consistency, asking for the business and working and working long hours, like working long hours, this stuff. Yeah, Lord, I think I'm the credit repair realtor. It, Pamela, own it, own it. So let me say it again. Um, niche, I'm adding, plus your network. If you don't have one, you need to start building one. Plus consistency, plus video, plus reels, plus engagement, plus lead capture, plus ask for the business, plus follow up equals. This is how social media will work for you. It what what um let's see right Sheena Sheena what Sheena does Sheena you you know we I need to ask I need to interview you what Sheena does first of all Sheena likes to go out you know at fifty almost fifty one you I get dressed sit down it's like do we even want to go outside right remember when Sinbad said that you're dressed you're cute you're ready to go if I sit down it's over like she likes to go out. She likes to connect with people. She knows, I can't even tell you who she knows because then somebody might call her. But like the people she knows, it's because she shows up, showing up to, I, I'm not even going to tell you where she goes because I'm going to try to do it. I mean, let me say it like this, showing up to your chamber of commerce meetings, showing up to women's council meeting meetings, showing up to your city meetings, going to coffee with your mayor, going to the state legislative meetings and networking with agents all over um, Illinois, going to the legislative meetings in DC and um, Maryland, go showing up at the NAR conventions. It is networking and meeting other people, even outside of your own industry. Like my sister's going to an educator event and I'm like, I think I should go to that. I think I should go to that. Like, I think I should go to the inbound event. Like, you, all of you need to understand that what works for me won't work for you. Like some, some of you guys actually like a lot of people or you really don't, but you're really good at saying, oh, that's a great idea. Like some of you like D, right? With, yeah, uh, speak with lenders. I don't even know what you said first, but I see the, uh, where do we go for tips on credit repair? First of all, inter here's my tip for the person that said that. If you want tips on credit repair, interview that lender that works harder than everyone else. Not the lender where you feel like every deal is squeaky clean. And then when you call them and they say, oh, this person can't buy, that's not the person. I'm going like even and I don't do a, And some of you know, I have to I have I manage agents and I keep I tell you, I keep coming back. I keep com coming back for listing appointments to buyers. I'm not going out, but I'll go get the listing. I say I'm coming back because some of you need to understand we need to go back to I'm, some of you need to see that this stuff really does work. Inter so Arlene Price was one of the first lenders that contacted me and she um, and even Tina about a cola like they can tell you how to fix your credit, but you have to do it. Now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't pay someone, but you probably don't need to pay someone. And let me I'll give you a tip on credit repair. If you want to, if you, if agents, if you have credit issues, the best time to write your letters for credit repair is as soon as Thanksgiving hits, drop it in the mail Monday of Thanksgiving and work and get all your letters in the mail because they have 30 days to respond and people, more people take vacations at the credit bureau. Now that's a not a hundred percent guarantee, but it's one of the best ways to get something off your credit. And the other a tip for credit repair is pay your bills on time. Ooh, that was hard. And number three is you need to make sure all, if you have a $10,000 limit, that means you can't spend more than $2,000. If you get to the 10,000, you got to pay it down to 8,000. And if you have a $2,000 credit card, if you pay it off, your credit card's going down. Like, I feel like there are many days I could be that credit repair person because I'm going to tell you the truth. And you might have to write some letters. It, and by the way, tell your clients before they do anything or pay anything off, call the loan officer that understands how the process works. I had another agent send me a DM and she, I mean, a um, text. She was like, here, somebody stole my credit card. They bought $4,000 worth of tires and my credit score dropped hundred points. You just need to pay your bills on time. And if you have student loans, you got a lot of work. If you owe child support, get it current because you won't buy. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Good tips. Whatever you said, Ebony, interview the lender who is um, a beast. Yeah, there you go. And then you can just say, what should I ask you? And then you get all the questions from the lender and go live. Go live. People will watch you. And, and by the way, I'm live every Friday. It's just me. I think I need to do conversations with top producers like one night a week. 
Would you guys show up for that? There you go. Women's Council West Suburban, if you're still in the house, there you go. Like people will show up to hear from a top producer. And that that could work. That that could work. All right. So if you have questions, um, if you have questions, if you're on Facebook, post them on Facebook or YouTube, and I'll come back and catch you on YouTube, um, or I'll see it in the feed. If you are on Instagram, here we go. I know I might have to do this. How to not get frustrated with credit repair clients. Now, that's a good one. First of all, they need you need to create a funnel and you, you might need to have, you know, tell your credit repair clients to, you know, tell their friends to show up. I had a lot of people that were credit repair my first two years. Actually, one just recently called me and they want to buy again. And they were one of my first clients. So that would be a great interview. Let's see. Let me know when you will teach an investment class, including from the search to um, ARV. Yeah, I could do that. I don't invest, but Mark does. And I'm the one that has to do the numbers because I'm very conservative. I am very, I'm conservative. I'm like, nope, don't buy it. Does any, does everyone know that the interest rates uh, um, have gone up like in two days? Like they've gone up like twice. We're about to have a market correction. That's what the feds do. They, the market is about to correct. The market is going to correct. So there you go. All right. If I don't have any other questions, I'm going to tell all of my Facebook friends, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining me. So if you're on Facebook, come, you got to go to my YouTube channel, subscribe. There are, there are a lot of you here today that haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want my, if you want to get my emails, go to the link in my bio on Instagram. I'll post the link on Facebook, YouTube, everywhere in the feed from this video and join my podcast.